Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. Uh, what you're looking at here is uh, this, this is a standard uh, tri field meter, and I've got it set to the uh, 0 to 3 milligauss magnetic field range, and that's what you'll be reading on this scale right here. And uh, I have my Arduino inductance meter hooked up, and it's measuring the inductance of this. Um, 1.5 millihenry marked uh, commercial inductor and uh, most of the time when it gets a complete pulse in it reads that 1.5 millihenry is quite accurately and you can see the measurement pulse, the interrogation pulse on the tri-field meter whenever the inductance meter actually pulses the inductor to see what it's resonant frequency is when it's in the tank circuit with its two microfarad capacitor uh, under there. Okay. So every time that little pulse happens that's a, an interrogation from the meter to the uh, to the inductor there. Okay. Now what I'm trying to uh, explain in this video is uh, what exactly is a true Tesla bifiler wound coil and what effect does a bifiler winding have on the coil's inductance? Uh, now, people have a lot of misconceptions about this. Some people think that a Tesla bifiler, a true Tesla bifiler winding, cancels out inductance, uh, or that it has no inductance or less inductance than a normally wound coil would, and that's just not the case. So what I've got here is uh, I've got a, a coil that I wound with two different colors of enameled magnet wire, uh, number 22. They're both number 22 and they're both enameled copper. One of them has a darker red enamel and the other one has kind of a clear enamel on it. So this is two strands of enameled copper wire just wound continuously onto this form and then I have the ends out here of the of the wires. Okay, so Here's what we have. We have two. We have, we have the, the two parallel wires wound all together onto the form, nice and neatly. Now there are a couple of different ways that we could hook up those two wires together. We could do what we call a hairpin by filer, so that the coils are in strict series. The or well, they're in series either way. But in this in this way, we take the top end of one coil, hook it to the top end of the other coil, and then take the two bottom ends as our inputs and outputs. So the current goes up one coil and then comes back down the other coil. So at every place along the coil you have two oppositely directed currents. So it's pretty clear that in this case the magnetic fields should cancel out, right? But this is not a true Tesla by filer winding. The true Tesla by filer winding is like this. You take the top of the one coil and hook it to the bottom of the other coil so that in the on the form you have one wrap from one coil down here and then electrically you have one wrap from the other coil over here which is separated by a, a lot of voltage, a lot of potential voltage from the wraps that it's actually next to. So there's a great deal of intercapacitance, inter, inter turn capacitance in this type of a winding, whereas there isn't in this type of a winding, or rather in this type of a winding. But there's no reason, since the current is always going in the same direction through this Tesla true by filer, there's no reason to expect that the inductance or the magnetic field would be decreased the way that it is in this coil over here. Right? So I hope to be able to show that uh, using my little pre-prepared -pre -pre bifiler coil right here. Uh, I don't know if I have enough hands to do it. So first, let me just remove the, the uh, 1.5 millihenry coil from my inductance meter here using one hand. Okay. Now you can see when that coil is out, you there's no no inductor now to catch that interrogation pulse from the meter so you don't see that spike 
of uh, in the milligauss range on the magnetic field indicator. Okay, so now if I can just let's look at just one of the windings here. We'll look at the one with the lighter colored wire, which is these two uh, two two wires right there. Let's put those into the inductance meter. Okay, now of course this is an air core coil with not very much wire, so you get a weak magnetic field out of it. The inductance is only 15 microhenries for the one winding, and you can just barely see the interrogation pulse happening uh, from the magnetic field there. Okay, so now that's just the one winding. So now if I take and make a hairpin by filer out of it by taking the two windings at one end of this coil here and connecting them together. Okay, so now what I've done is I've twisted the two ends, uh, the two top ends together and I've got the two bottom ends of the coil separated here. So this turns it into a hairpin type by filer with this kind of a winding arrangement here. Right? So now let's stick the leads into the inductor, inductance meter here, and let's see what happens. Okay, we actually get no indication on the inductance meter. No inductor. And we see no big pulse there from the interrogation. Okay. So even though we've got current flowing through the coil, we get no inductance and no magnetic field that way in the hairpin type by filer winding. Now for the true Tesla by filer, we have to rearrange the connections again. Okay, for the true Tesla by filer, now I've taken the top of the one coil and connected it to the bottom of the other coil here, as you can see. So now we take the two free ends over to our inductance meter, and we stick them in the holes there, like that. And now you can see that we get an inductance that's about five or four times as high as we had with just the one coil of wire and we clearly see the interrogation pulse from the inductance meter circuit when it uh, when it when it comes through okay all right so that's the difference between a hairpin by filer which cancels out the inductance and creates no magnetic field because they cancel at every step of the way and a true Tesla by filer which actually increases the coil self inductance increases the interturn capacitance and uh, creates a good strong magnetic field Okay. Thank you for watching.